13 runs in, 10's trying to challenge, 12 goes back door. What are our options here? Change or short down. So we can go short to 13, we go back door to 12, we could go um, 10 could run. And if we go back door to 12, so he's here now, what can you do? He can run, he can pass out to 15, he can pass back into blind wing. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of three clips of the same option <coughs> in one game. Where what we're trying to do is, I guess, shape a defence. So they're expecting you to do one option, but everything's based around looking forward and everyone's alive. So 10's going to carry and challenge, it's on for him to run or run. If uh, 13 running short and it's on for him, he's going to give him the ball because he's going to call give. And if it's not on for him, he'll just call shit. Not, not necessarily that, but he'll just say something that doesn't give. And then we'll go back door to the 12, and he's got an inside option and an outside option. So that comes out of our pass solution. A lot of that's based around what we see and how we communicate that. So I'll show you that. Uh, manipulation uh, with footwork. So uh, what we call a white, which is just a, I don't know, what do you guys call it? Do you call it a cut or you call it a switch? Switch. switch. So being this type of thing where 10 will run, maybe Adam and then get across on a bit of a 45 and what line 12 run? 45 back. Right, first thing he runs? Straight. Straight. No, he goes that way. Oh. What's that? So we're now defending here. He sees him going out. That's the way it, that's the way it looks for them. So we've got to do that and then change an the angle to come under. Okay, so the footwork for this guy to manipulate, get at him, challenge this guy. <coughs> um, this guy chases hard across, spaces under, and this guy's going to be able to react to that. So we're going to do a little bit of work on that outside. Uh, relationships, what do you reckon that means? Where to be, talking, knowing how the best player next to you is, knowing where he's going to be when you come to the hole, what he's going to do with that space. Yeah, and so knowing the guys you're playing with. So if you've got a guy who's got bloody great footwork and you know that on a two on two, he's got good enough footwork to you know, sit this guy on his heels, challenge the next guy, so you're going to stay outside him, knowing that he'll pull both guys in and create a space. Uh, you've been watching your black test recently? Yeah. Anyone see the Aussie test, not last night, but the one before? Yeah. Aaron, the very first try of the game, Ben Smith scored. <coughs> Aaron created two on two. He used to the footwork, ran here. Um, this guy was coming in on him. He held and then he got a little flip pass away, put the winger over. That's an example of Ben Smith knew Aaron was going to offload because he does those all the time. So it's an understanding of the players you play with, their, their certain strengths, and anticipating that. Um, so it could be that he's bloody good at using a bit of footwork getting through here and offload away. So um, a Sonny Bill Williams, for example, guys are looking to run off him because they know that if he gets through, everything's right <coughs> from Sonny. So he's going to, you know who Sonny Bill Williams is? Yeah. Okay. Um, he's going to offload this way, or he's going to offload that way. But he can do, you know, he passes just as well. He can here and throw a spiral, and he'll throw it 15 metres. So you guys understand when Sonny's carrying, you can see there's an opportunity there, they're going to run either side of him for an option. Yeah. So understanding the strengths and ability of your mates and anticipating that. That, that, can, be your, that can be your strength. Um, now vision decision is a lot around playing what we see. And so, um, how do we create opportunities to attack from broken field play? If you can uh, give me an example. <coughs> yep. So attacking, attacking space, 
hopefully commit defenders to create space for someone else somewhere else. What if we've got ball? Understanding where to be. Just put yourself in the proper position to make an available play. Okay, so look at the example. Um, opposition got a ball here as a scrum. Um, let's say this is a field here, not a very good field. So how do we get an opportunity to attack over the scrum, defensive scrum? Spread the field first. Now we're defensive pressure. You know, take advantage of the ball. Yeah, I've got the ball there. So, I'm oh, sorry, maybe I've explained this one enough. Our team's going this way. So we're going up this way, but they've got the ball. So it's this scrum. Okay. Okay. Sorry, we're going to spend it every one. Yell at the pack to make sure they win the scrum. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, you're actually not far off the money. It's about putting enough pressure <coughs> through our forwards on their scrum for them to get shitty ball, allow our nine to put a bit of pressure on, to maybe stuff up their eight at the back, or to allow us to get a flyer at their 10 so he gets a shitty kick away. So, Maybe he kicks it out, maybe we get a set piece there. But a poor kick may result in an opportunity to count. And now we've got a broken field opportunity. So that's working out from here, how do we score? Where have we got the ball? How do we score from here? Well, we get an A scrum or an E scrum, that's what we call them. Um, depending on what side up we want. Put a bit of pressure on them, force them to get a shitty kick away. We know we're going to have guys chasing. You see our recruiting get a lot of charge downs. Recently, mm -hmm. they're all, it's all tactical. So he's, he's he knows that right footer, left footer, low trajectory, he can accelerate onto that and anticipate. So he's probably scored maybe five tries this year for the charge downs. So trying to get a result here, that's going to give us an opportunity to counter. Right, so that comes down to our nows, and then it comes down to vision decision. So Knowing that we've got space and we can attack from, and I'll give an example of that. Um, and then the last thing is about rehearsal. So you've got to do a lot of this to become good at it. And what it is, it's about being good in unstructured play. Mm -hmm. So you, have, you need to have some structure in and around your unstructured play. So there'll be some basic philosophies, e.g. the ball's kicked down one side of the field, other guys are working hard to get back. So your midfielders will have a role and the ball's kicked back. Maybe they're going to the sideline. And your fullback uh, is coming closer to the guy catching the ball. He's the winger. The open, open wing's coming to fullback. So now we've got an opportunity to spread the ball across there. Um, what we do a bit, uh, I'm not going to show you any clip of this, but we also get our forwards to track back a little bit and again in between the chasing line. What would that be? Line broke there for sport. To block their that's one option. What was the signal something? To block their defensive line. Nice, nice. So, so here's all their chasers, for example. They've got the chasing line here. And they've kicked the ball back to our winger. What's that winger? It's 11. 11 throws with, say, 15. 14 is worked to the middle of the field. These guys are chasing up the line. And we will try and get guys in around here. We'll run back in amongst the line. And I'll try and shepherd them in. So what they'll do is, they'll run here. So he might be carrying. They'll just indicate a place to run to. So it could be that he's going to try and run up this guy, and he's going to step and run hard in here. And this guy can't get to him. But if he's subtle enough, this is <coughs> level. If you if you trip, hold, grab, put a foot out, all that sort of thing, you've got some problems. But ultimately, he can run there and he can just shoulder. And he shoulders that guy out, and then you get to run through there. So, all you've got to do is do enough to beat that guy and run back into this channel. So, this is unstructured play, but there's a bit of structure to it, I guess is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, having a plan around that. So, I'd encourage coaches in the room to have philosophies around you turn over the wall, which we're going to do a bit on tomorrow. Uh, and you can affect stuff. Uh, so simply from counter, and I'll show you, I'll show you one example. 
Uh, the horse get back to us, we have, um, we have a lamb beef and pork option, which lamb is going all the way to the side. You guys know what lamb is? Pretty common in New Zealand. Um, so we're going to spread the board to the sideline. If we're going to run a beef, beef means we're running towards the middle. So we're going to look to, to carry aggressively in there, but it may be that 15 carries, 14 will go in, 11 trails for an inside option. He may have to look after the ball as well. We always have our two locks designated to try and get to that ruck, to clean it out quickly. And then what we do is, if we're hitting in the middle, we, we sweep our midfielders back around. And the reason we do that is because teams end up with forwards defending on that short side. Okay, so that'll be on the beef. And then if we're doing a pork, it's pretty messy now. Pork is, he throws the 15, he runs, gags back, comes back to 11 because they've got guys chasing the field. And one of our Lucy's who might have been part of this will drop back to that sideline to give us an extra number. So that's a little bit of structure within our structure play. How you do that is up to you, coaches, but having a plan around it is pretty important. And then just doing lots of activities is going to highlight that. So I'll show you a couple of clips to um, emphasize what we talked about. So this is the uh, Browns, or what we call the 13 running short, I'm not sure what you guys call them, blockers, sliders. Um, I'm not sure if the speaker's working either. Not that it really matters. Okay, yeah, we got hit lights, we good, thanks. Um, what, do you, what do you do there? What did you do? Aaron's trying to put a lot of pressure on, but the way it goes from there to Aaron Crew. Right, so his intention is not necessarily to run, but he's challenging and he's got a bit of vision, peripheral vision, to know that Bowden Barrett is the worst defensive player in the competition. <laughs> um, there's a good chance to run in that channel if he's sliding. So he's red body shape and he's carried. Got a little shot of the ball, got through the first tackle to his forward about getting the pass away to Sonny Bill Williams. <coughs> Bradley was the... Gets a bit messy in there. End off. It's the same game, it's just a general Carl play. Lowe. Now crew in a straight line from Carhoe. Got through the tackle of tackle of Bowden Barrett. So same thing again. That, that call is back door. But if it's on going short, the centre will over call. And he's hunting, running hard. It's, we've got a pretty big midfield on the, on the park that game. Um, so he had short, hit gain line, quick ball, and recycle off that. It's relentless. Hurricanes are holding, but only just Williams back and forth against the summer. So same thing again. Just something back door with the trailing wing option to go inside, outside. To be honest, Lelia, the winger who's got the ball. Uh, terrific ball carrier, bloody hard to get the ball back out of his hands. Yeah, I think he should have passed. Um, I presented the jersey to him, he's just gone to Japan for squillions of dollars. And he played, he's played 92 games for the Chiefs now. Um, I had to present a jersey to him at our prize giving and I put up some stats. He scored 40 odd tries, he played 90 odd games. He, done this, done that, passed the ball three times. <laughs> it's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's not, it's not, it's not far off. Right, so, so what we're seeing here, that's, all that stuff is based on playing what we see. So if it's a structure, 10's going to be a challenge, it's going to be a threat. If they slide off him, you'll carry. If 13's in a hole, he's going to demand the ball. If not, we're going back door, and blind wing will demand the ball if he's on, or full back will talk, and so on. That takes a lot of rehearsal. So, we set up situations where you guys are running. You're not going to get it right. You're going to make mistakes. Uh, but by doing it often, by seeing it, we get confident. You're looking forward. Uh, you trust. All those little things. So our call is give. And anything else is bullshit. If someone's calling give, give him the ball. Because he's he reckons he's in a hole. Now, if you give him the ball and he gets knocked over, it's his bloody fault, I guess. So, you know, when we do obviously have a look at why he called give, was it because he just wanted a ball because he hasn't got to touch it recently? <laughs> or was it what was best for the team, you know? 
So, um, so that's important, and that, that comes from rehearsal. We're going to have a bit of a crack at that when we get outside. Um, here's a bit of footwork stuff. Aaron Cruden. Oh, come on! <laughs> Uh, I cut that out. He did, he did catch it and score. It's not like um, I've cut it because he dropped it. Um, but again, if we go back to to that. So what do you see there? Shoulders turned. Yeah. So he's Aaron's bloody good at this. We'll either get at you and then run across and and. Encourage you to chase, and then Tim's read that. So this was a call. Aaron just got up, <coughs> seen who it is. He starts to go. He's relying on the fact that Tim will understand. He wants him to come under, and he'll run under there. So for those who would have seen any of our stuff, the Chiefs last year with Aaron and Sonny Bill, uh, where Aaron's great for all you teams in the room is he'll get the ball and he'll see maybe a seven defending in here or an inside back and a fatty, a, um, a front rower or something. And so he'll just use a bit of footwork and he'll go and he'll, he'll run. And he'll encourage this guy to get as close as he can to him. They'll give it to Sonny really late. Now Sonny's running an arc, hitting square, with a front row trying to get across and cover him, but no shot. So again, this takes a bit of practice and we're gonna have to play with that outside. Switching from Williams and back to Korean, beautiful landing. Now, I'll we'll show you this. Because uh, the only call, talk about creating um, creative space, is this is a set piece. So I've got to save this for the back attack stuff, but uh, there's quite a lot of angles involved in it that you need to understand. So we've got um, 12 rounds <coughs> over here. We hit 13 with blind wing on the inside as an inside option. Uh, although we only give it to him if he says give. Uh, and then 13 jams back to try and hold a defender. 10 will wrap and then we play. And in this case, Aaron runs on a bit of a 45, so the full bit runs under. So here come the Chiefs again. There's now no Williams. He's putting on the double round. Hands come on the charge. Hands come sprinting. And hands come scoring. So you, if you break that down, um, there's a lot of guys doing a bloody good job in amongst us. So the, the line that Tim runs is spot on. So he hits square, then he steps back in to interest the defender. They think there's only an inside option, they see Aaron coming. That, that's, that's crucial. So, thank you again. He would just react to <laughs> Again, the more more repetition we have in regard to creating situations where guys are going to react off the ball carrier, the more successful <coughs> we'll be. So, so that could be fullback. This could be a guy who's a little bit isolated. This could be a guy close to a ruck. We have an attacker here, here, and here. He starts with the ball, and all I'll just say is you, you start when you're ready to go, you run. You do this at a fair clip, he runs. What he want to do? Draw that. Right, if he holds him in there, and this guy turns in, pass, two and one down here. But this guy's a long way away. It's about, about 12 metres that distance. So we draw and pass. What might that defender do, because he doesn't want to get held in here? Yes. Slide out. So he might backtrack. He might push out here, but he might try and stay and connect with this guy who's now coming across. So he may say, let him go, this guy might talk, so he gets to run. Now what? So this guy's now running, he's got to be out here. What these guys want to do? Keep moving. Yeah. The little guy yeah. cuts back on the switch. What, what does it depend on? Where the defender on the top side goes. So <coughs> it depends on a few things. How fast this guy is. Yeah. So you know he's real fast? He just blitzes here, he's going to get away from that cover because you know he's quick. Mm -hmm. So you start on the outside and he'll then straighten up maybe and draw past. Because you're fast, you know you can run past this guy. But if he gets in the hole 
And this guy's turned and he's blocked out your pass. So now you're here, and he's there, and him trying to pass to you now is going to be difficult because he's going to hand it away and so on. What might you do if you were that person? Switch. Yeah, you might change an angle. So you're running here and this guy's coming across and he's trying to stay out here, you might run under. Or, again, this guy might be trying to cover you and you might go under a little bit, he might turn that way because you lose a side here and you might be able to bounce back out and still draw him past, whatever. But doing these sort of things means that when we get into game situations in broken field, we're likely to make better decisions because with rehearsed it. Okay? And it's again coming down to relationships, understanding the ability of your guys. Is he going to get a pass away? Um, can he give me that little switch ball or what we call a white ball? Okay. Um, <coughs> and the last thing was around that counter thing I talked about. So we pin them down in the corner, they've kicked back. We've got a lot of numbers working hard to get back. And it's given away to his left. And three other runners as well. One of now it's just play. So he's a hooker on the sidelines, he runs a white. Fix it inside. Get a bit of luck here. <laughs> and we by all it's a half it's a hooker play. playing halfback. The the ball's available. Right. Hooker in the halfback again. Little return ball. And ball. And okay, so. You saw elements of that and we have created space for others. We put a really good kick, and I'll talk about, we would have already talked about kicking, but we've changed all of us. But we put a really good kick in, which bounced three times. We were able to put a bit of pressure on. Shitty kick back, we got numbers, and then we play. So we play to the space, and then because we've breached, we're looking to get to where the space is, and often it's on the other side of the field. Uh, we end up hitting some big guys in close. Then we, what we call a green, which is a real return ball, because a lot of teams will jam in on that, and then we find space on the sideline. So, again, all that sort of stuff, uh, especially for the coaches in the room, takes rehearsal. So, there are lots of little elements in amongst that. Hey, we saw a hooker understanding that he has to run a white ball, because otherwise he runs over the sideline. Uh, we saw the hooker have enough um, mouse to go and play halfback, because there's no point him going to that ruck, was it? He just go and sit over the ball and slide down. So he's just playing. And we're going to talk a bit more about that when we do team attack. But so whoever's there plays half back and we clear the ball. And then it's about organisation. So our team's here, but it's one of those forwards called that green. So he's in there and they realise oh, the fence is quite tight. We can jam them in. Because when you run that, they run forward, there's actually no one outside. So they don't the opposition don't think there's an option there. I mean, he looks like he's going to give it inside to this guy, but gives a little circle ball. I'm not saying do that, but what I'm saying is have some organisation. So when you've when you've got a team that's now quite confined because you've breached and they've all drifted towards that corner of the field, you need something that's going to stick them there. And often those sort of return balls are an easy way of doing it. Sometimes it's just holding width and passing. 